Hi, my name is Yona. I'm the after school leader at Field Teen Center, and today I'm going to talk about The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab. In the town of Near, a stranger has arrived, and shortly after, children start to disappear. The town council blames the stranger and is out for blood, but Lexi doesn't think that the stranger is the cause of the disappearances, but she's going to figure out what is. She is a savvy hunter who sneaks out her window at night despite her uncle's warnings and cautionings to get to the heart of what is going on on the moors. This is a really great book for folks who like things that go bump in the night, girls that sneak around at night, mysteries, folk stories, and of course witches. Something that this book plays with in a really interesting way is the idea of witchiness and villainy and to what degree those two things go together. So if you were the type of person who listened to Grimm's fairy tales and thought it was unfair that the witch was always the villain and wondered if maybe she wasn't just an old lady, this book has some things to say about that that you will find interesting. You'll also like this book if you like folk tales because as much as Lexi is shaped by her father's knife at her hip and her boot, his boots on her feet, she's also shaped by the stories that he told her about people and about the world around them. And it teaches her how to see things in a different way that reveals some of the mysteries in this story. So I'm going to read a passage. The children in the town are getting ready to play a game together and it weaves into the story of the Moors and the mystery that's at play. I watch as the game takes shape. This is the same one I used to play, Tyler on one side, Helena on the other, the spinning game. It starts with a song, the witch's rhyme. The song has been around as long as the bedtime stories of the near witch, and those have been around as long as the Moor itself, it seems. It is a fearfully addictive tune, so much so that it seems the wind itself has taken to humming it. The children join hands. They begin to move in a slow circle as they sing. The wind on the moors is a singin' to me, the grass and the stones and the far off sea, the crows all watching on the low stone wall, the flowers in the yard all stretching tall, to the garden we children went every day to hear the witch and watch her play. The children sing faster as they pick up speed. The game always reminds me of the way the wind whips up the fallen leaves, spinning them in tight, dizzying rings. She spoke to the earth, and the earth it cracked, spoke to the wind, and it whistled back, spoke to the river, and the river whirled, spoke to the fire, and the fire curled. But little boy Jack, he stayed too long, listened too close to the witch's song, faster. Six different flowers on the little boy's bed, her house it burned in the witch she fled, cast out, thrown out on the moor, near witch, more witch, now no more. And faster still, the witch still a sing in her hills to sleep, her voice is high and her voice is deep. Under the door the sounds all sweep, through the glass the words all creep, the near witch is a sing in to me. The song starts over. A wind on the moors is a singing to me. If you want to know more about that, go get the book. If you've already read the book, let us know what you think. Give us a comment and share some words.